unboxing video for this Dell Thunderbolt uh, Dock TV16, um, I, I discussed what I felt were some of the inconveniences uh, with this relatively short cable. In that video, I discussed how I was able to eventually arrange things in a way that worked for me. So I've been able to work with this short cable. Even though I was able to work with this short cable, I actually still wanted to call Dell and find out, hey, is there an extension cable available? And I wanted to look to see if I could learn more about whether there was an extension cable available from Dell or anybody else, and if not, why, and all that jazz. So Dell gave me some answers and I found out some other information and I wanted to share those in this video. I called Dell to ask them if they have an extension cable and they said no, no extension cable is available. I asked as a follow-up question, why do you ship this docking station with an instruction booklet that explains how to use a screwdriver to remove the brackets that let you remove this cable and to put, to put in a new cable. Why do you provide instructions on how to do that if there is no extension or replacement cable? And their simple answer was that those instructions are to be used by somebody who is going to receive a docking station in replacement for a docking station that's going to be sent back to Dell. So like in a servicing or RMA situation, they tell me they send an updated dock or a new dock to a user uh, without a cable and they expect the user to unscrew their existing cable off their existing dock before they send it back and insert it into the new dock and put it in there. So I decided to search on the web for Thunderbolt 3 maximum cable length. And the first search result I get indicates that for Thunderbolt 3, uh, the maximum cable length allowed to support 40 gigabits per second is half a meter, which is the length of the cable that Dell gives you on their dock. And their dock is spec to support up to 40 gigabits per second. Interestingly, the same search result says a one meter cable, which is double the size of this cable, allows you to support up to 20 gigabits per second. I find that correlation interesting that you can double the cable size, which halves the maximum allowed throughput. That sort of simplifies understanding things, but it's also an interesting correlation. My understanding is that this limitation is in place given uh, where current cable technology is at. And my understanding is that uh, with the best architecture of cable, so to speak, that they have today, that it's not reasonable with Thunderbolt 3 to expect greater than 40 gigabits per second with any cable longer than half a meter. And what we're talking about is a cable that's meant for Thunderbolt 3. This is not any old cable that has a USB uh, type C connector. And this brings me to another point. You can't simply take any old USB C extension cable and use it with this cable cable, uh, there's two things going on wrong there. First, you're extending this cable in a way that's going to degrade the maximum allowed bandwidth. And two, the connector itself is not only lengthening, but it's a non-optimum way to lengthen a cable uh, in a relative sense. The most optimum way to lengthen a cable is really to just have a cable that's a solid single cable of the length that you need for the technology in question, in this case, Thunderbolt 3. So extending this cable with some ad hoc uh, extension cable is probably not gonna work, probably because the, the wiring is not gonna be correct in such an extension cable. Keep in mind, USB is different than Thunderbolt. Uh, this Thunderbolt cable may be able to carry USB, but that's different than a USB Type-C cable that's just meant to carry USB. In any event, it appears that there really is no reasonable way to reliably extend this cable. But one area where my eyes opened up a little bit is that I really started thinking about what this is. This is a docking station. It's not really a hub even though it's easy to look at it like that because it's a cube. What I'm getting at here is that docking stations of yesterday used to be the solid pieces of equipment that would be on your desk in a specific location and you would insert your laptop into it. The fact that this is being done with a single cable in this cube means that the docking support is actually a little more intra workspace mobile, so to speak. In other words, I have more mobility with, with where I put this docking station than I would with a docking station of yesterday. 
That's not to say that as a user, you or me are not correct in wanting a longer cable. I actually think it would be cool if Dell could come up with an active cable that you could buy that might be a little extra cost or something that would be like an active cable that you could hook up to a power supply or something to get extra length uh, with reliable communication with this docking station. I don't even know if that's feasible by today's standards, but um, it would just be a nice to have. So putting this into context, we have to remember this Thunderbolt 3 cable is channeling PCI Express. Now right then and there, that's pretty phenomenal when you think about it from a technological perspective. Think about standard PCI for a second and those cards you would insert into the traditional you know, PCI computers. If you've seen those cards with all the little copper connectors and you plug them into your computer with those long cards and all the little you know, mm -hmm. copper connectors, that bus architecture is, 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 is largely uh, parallel, like the data and addresses are largely transmitted amongst the system that manages that bus in parallel. Now, I've traditionally thought of parallel communication of data as the faster way to to communicate than serial uh, given all other things being equal but apparently that's not the case for some very interesting reasons. I went and read the uh, Wikipedia article for um, PCI Express as well as DisplayPort and um, those enlightened me to some of the communication issues which become enhanced with serial communications nowadays uh, along these optimum cables that they create this Thunderbolt 3 technology. Basically with parallel communication what's interesting is you can't guarantee all parallel channels are going to arrive at the same time and this creates some latency that must be addressed by the bus and the bus then has to waste time dealing with that whereas with serial communication a lot of that gets resolved and you don't waste as much time dealing with those communication factors I think that's pretty phenomenal that you have serial that's faster than parallel and serial actually takes up less space which is also a nice benefit of serial, so we're getting two benefits. We're getting faster PCI throughput on its serial bus, and we are also getting less cables, less wiring, because parallel requires more wiring than a serial-based uh, paradigm. So keep in mind, this Thunderbolt 3 is not only multiplexing its PCI Express, but it's handling uh, Ethernet and USB and DisplayPort uh, all over this one cable, and it's you know, it's a lot of stuff. And so this is a docking station doing all that. That's different than a USB hub, which is pretty much doing that for just USB. And if you happen to have USB 3.1, that's handling up to 10 gigabits per second. Compare that with this, up to 40 gigabits per second. So the requirements to do two 4K displays, which this can handle, and PCI Express to do all the things it can do and everything, is uh, just, you know, it's so far above USB 3.1. So when we compare this to a USB hub, it's not really being fair to this. If we really think of this as replacing those docking stations of yesterday that were more limited and didn't have a nice little single cable like this, it makes me a lot more appreciative for this one little cable here, which I kind of understand now has some limitations just simply due to the science of what in this day and age can be accomplished with current cable technology and, um, and Thunderbolt 3. So that leaves me in a case where I'm going to accept this short half meter cable and the functionality I get for this. If you only need USB capability, you may be better off with a USB hub. If you need multiple displays, this may be the thing for you to look at. It really depends on where your needs are at. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. It's just a small little update here on the cable length and I hope you found it interesting. I just wanted to get into those and solve that and answer that question for myself. And right now at this point, seems like this is half a meter and that's it. I'm not personally going to recommend trying to extend this at all. It just seems that this that they've done a lot of work to determine that if you want 40 gigabits per second, you're going to need a cable that is a Thunderbolt 3 cable and it shouldn't be more than half a meter if you want to do that reliably. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.